Ladies and gents, almost as you reaction. This is the end of the largest battleship in the world. Is it about General Yan Hub? I'm pretty sure I watched a Yan Hub video about some B bomber or something. Battle between two things or something. I'm pretty sure I remember that. So, this is a good channel as far as I can remember. Uh, you know, so this is about Yamato. People are talking about, you know, I heard people talking about Yamato in the comments. I'm like, what the hell? Let's do it. This is the largest battleship in the world, or was at least. Basically, Japanese ship. I'm guessing during the World War II time and it got sank. But okay. It's gonna be fun. I like history video, historical videos, as you already know. Uh, so if you haven't seen another reaction, historical reaction, check out the link in the description there to find it. Yeah, let's do it. This video is sponsored by World of Warships. It's the dawn of the 7th of April, 1945, off the south coast of Japan. Ten shadows stretch across the sea's surface in the early morning sunshine, a formation breaking through the waves onwards to their fate. In the center is a giant, a 72,000-ton behemoth. It's a battleship bigger than anything that's come before or Look since. The size. Armed with nine 18-inch cannons firing 3,000-pound shells, 16 inches of armor across the waterline, and secondary weapons bigger than the main armament of the destroyers around her, she's the pride of the Japanese Imperial Navy the symbol of Japanese unwavering resolve, the Yamato. On board, Admiral Ito Seichi looks on from his command seat, supervising the flurry of coordinated and well-practiced activity before him with the characteristic calculating coldness of any good Japanese officer. And you too can be a naval commander when you play World of Warships, who sponsor today's video. You can even reenact the action in today's film with your team taking control of ships like the mighty Yamato. And now there are top-notch new graphics. They have dynamic, stunning new water effects that make the game seas virtually indistinguishable from the real thing. You can play alongside 44 million other players and it's available on PC and is free to play. With over 400 historical ships in stunning detail, World of Warships is a unique digital museum of legendary vessels. Support Yarn Hub by downloading World of Warships. Okay, not gonna lie, the Assassin's Creed Black Flag probably helped this game a lot. But still remember how big that game was, how many people love it, and how big the whole ship thing was. Assassin's Creed 3 is the first time you actually played the Assassin's Creed ship thing. It wasn't as big as it was in the Black Flag, the game that came later. Which was insane even to to date, right? I'm still waiting for the game Skull and Bones. They say it's not like Black Flag type of game, but it's like I'm pretty sure developed by the same people, same type of thing with more modern. I, you know, even to date, right? Like there is no other game I play that's like that kind of fun, like Black Flag was, right? With the boat and everything, right? You can go to islands and shit and basically just take up a boat and attack things. Most of the games I played just attacking ships and legendary ship and things like that. So this is basically like that, but more advanced, I guess, uh, you know, current world type of thing. The link in the description. And if you use the link in the description and use the code FIRE, you'll receive 200 doubloons, a premium battleship, the USS Texas, 20 restless fire camouflage, 1 million credits, and seven days of premium account for free. Please click the link and start playing the great game today. Back on the Yamato, their mission is simple and brutal. Operation Ten Go involves the entire fleet charging the American ships, providing artillery support to the invasion of Okinawa. They are to throw themselves straight through the enemy, beach all ten ships ashore, and fight to the last. Travel booking for now, Hassan. Make my trip. Download the app now. Ito despises the plan. It's wasteful at a time when the nation can't spare an ounce of metal. But the emperor has spoken, and a loyal Japanese officer, emperor he is spoken. prepared to passionately fulfill orders to the end, just like all the Sounds brave like men around him. But that doesn't make the reality that he won't return to his family any less painful. Things are going smoothly when an officer calls to him, relaying that an American flying boat has been spotted shadowing them. Ito orders to open fire, and a handful of anti-aircraft guns come to life. But the plane hides behind clouds before any of the gunners can judge distance and escapes unscathed. The guns fall silent, and the bad news reaches him. He doesn't react, and the fleet continues onwards. The morning passes, and the day carries on, when the bridge receives more bad news. 
a Japanese held island communicates that over 200 I'm not gonna lie uh, you know it really feels like you feel like the biggest thing that is like in this one largest battleship they know it then it must be like okay we are a big fucking target right because you think like oh look at that I'm badass right like biggest battleship in the whole fucking war right we basically we are, we are the most badass here I don't have to fear no it's opposite of that you're a target now imagine people's mentality like why the fuck why can't i be in some like a middle type of size battleship why do i have to be in this one right even though there is like okay we are probably more equipped and armor and power probably some people are going to target us just because we're the biggest battleship it's also like a symbolism thing if you think that like in basically current war with the ukraine right uh, ukraine was kind of constantly like we just sank the biggest russian ship right there was like this symbolism thing so people can target just because of that because of the morale 50 American warplanes are headed straight for the ships. Tension looms over the bridge as eyes fall over Admiral Ito. He takes a deep breath. It's exactly what he expected and exactly what they aren't prepared for. He cedes strategic command to Captain Kosaku Aruga and retreats to his seat. Meanwhile, sailor Kazuhiro Fukumoto is passing time on the deck with some friends. He's young and unafraid. After all, what is there to fear with the power of the mighty Yamato the on your side? Then the alliance blare. Right the friends scatter and immediately run to their battle stations. Kazuhiro runs across the deck evading other rushing sailors as he rushes for his post on the opposite side of the ship. Anti-air weapons what rise the towards the sky. Okay, you're, you're in war and your post is like opposite side of the ship. Why are you in the other side in the first place? Like that feels weird. I get it, there's like more like a house and things up, but I don't know. Isn't it more efficient to stay around where your post is? You're literally in the sea, like you, you need you need to be attacking anyone anytime. Why are you in the whole other side of the boat? That doesn't make sense. And the way he was talking about this is the guy and just them, you know, them playing around. Like, what the fuck? Oh, he's trying to do some kind of a movie. Isn't this like a historical video? Locked and loaded. The gunners keep a watchful eye, scanning the never ending blanket of clouds. Then everything falls silent. There's a hum of distant engine noises in the sky, spiking the nerves of everyone on deck. Gunners grip their controls, aware they're staring at the angels of death, determined to fight to the bitter end. Where, where, the noises where? get louder and louder. In a yeah. flash, a wave of warplanes pierce through the clouds, the diving straight towards the mighty ship. The cacophony of anti-aircraft weapons roars and streaks of shining tracers fire into the sky. It's a swarm of warplanes. Dozens after dozens fall upon the mighty battleship, braving the wall of Japanese lead. The gunners fire non-stop towards their targets, giving it their all, but they do little. The fighters respond in kind. A hailstorm of 50 caliber bullets tears through the deck ripping through metal and people alike. Shrapnel and ricochets fly in every which way as the enemy zooms over their heads. Anti-aircraft guns spin in all directions, gunners tracking their own targets without orders. Muzzle flashes and fumes take hold of the lower superstructure as everything is fired into the sky. Kazuhiro can hear the chaos unfolding behind him as he hurries into the lower deck. He reaches the damage control station and barges into the room. Inside, he finds his superior and a few fellow sailors sitting patiently, waiting to be summoned. Nervously, he joins them in silence, listening to the gunfire and explosions that are happening overhead. Back outside, the sky is alight with tracers. The anti air Summoned for what? Okay, first of all, this is insane, right? Like, you think like being open is like one of the worst positions you can have, right? Without having any cover. Planes are basically there, open sky, yet somehow fighter pilots have found a way to reverse shit. If anything, they're like more dangerous to ships. Like, how does that work? You just in open, right? It should be like easy target. But they're maneuvering and just like evading things. Like, you need to be really skillful just to have become a fighter pilot, right? That's just insane shit. And they have to know like, okay, I have to predict like with which way they're probably going to shoot at me and try to evade that. Like, how do you do that that fast? Craft guns are struggling. Planes come down from the clouds, strafe and disappear back into the sky just as fast as they appeared, leaving them little time to react and take a good shot. There's just too many. Then a massive explosion sends shockwaves across the deck. The main batteries of the Yamato fire into the sky. 
Special beehive shells explode in the air, creating a giant cloud of burning phosphor shards. The big weapons, though, are completely incapable of tracking enemy aircraft in such low flight. The strafing runs do not falter. Bullets and bombs keep raining down mercilessly. Exposed anti-air gunners suffer greatly. They fall in droves with every attack. Brave souls dash across the exposed deck to replace their fallen brothers, only to suffer the same fate. The attack ends as suddenly as it begun, the planes simply disappearing through the clouds and not coming back. In their wake, they leave utter devastation. The deck Damn. is covered in men, bullet holes, shrapnel and blood, and a fire burns in the superstructure. Despite the human suffering, the ship itself suffers little more than superficial damage. Her seaworthiness is unaffected, really? and Kazuhiro's yeah. team remains in standby. What was the point of that? Back at the bridge, Admiral Ito remains quiet amidst the chaos. Orders and status updates fill the air as the captain attempts to regroup and prepare for more attacks. Ito doesn't intervene. He knows the end result is inevitable. The ship continues sailing towards Okinawa for an hour until the dreaded rumble of engines once again sounds through the clouds. It all becomes a blur as the battle resumes with the same brutality as before. Fighters and bombers fall upon the ship. Explosions rock the deck and one by one, the anti-air weapons fall silent. No more brave men are present to replace the fallen gunners. Damn. In the lower deck, Kazuhiro's team is... I get it, it's like World War II and shit, but your design must be really fucked up if you're going to make this kind of big ass weapon. Don't have position to hide somehow or just like, sh you know, shelter these gunners. If the gunners are going to just die left and right, like, why didn't you create something like how Germany did with the bunkers, like hiding these people, right? Inside the ship with a big ass armor or something. And second of all, like how you don't have something to defend against fighter jets. Like how are they just fucking you up this badly? Like didn't you think of that before making this kind of big ass ship? I know people say like this is World War II back then, technology isn't that. Then don't make this big of a fucking battleship, right? I mean, at this point, this just feels weird to me. Ordered further into the ship, he goes down with five more people to the second lowest deck. The ship rumbles and creaks around him, each explosion sending shockwaves through the hull. His commanding officer orders two of the group to go further down into the lowest deck to investigate for damage. Simultaneously, torpedo bombers skim the waves and release their deadly payloads. The captain orders evasive maneuvers, but they're of no use. Oh, Kazuhiro shit. watches that, as torpedo. two fellow sailors adventure into the lower decks and close the hatch behind them. Mere seconds later, a massive bang reverberates through the ship. The lights go out and water gushes up the hatch, quickly That's flooding the hear, hallway. He stumbles it's in like the pitch panic. dark, searching desperately for the way back up. People talk about Titanic and its horrors, right? And you see the movie and feel it. Imagine how many fucking battleships in World War II had the even worse fate than that, right? Titanic just hit one fucking iceberg. This thing gets hit by God knows how many torpedoes and shit. Imagine all those people. I remember like there, there was a video, I think Sam, I don't know if Sam made somebody else. Was it Sam 11? I don't know. One battleship that had like biggest casualty ever, like thousands of people just died in the ship either drowned or just got eaten by sharks or whatever that was i don't know which channel was that but yeah imagine shit like that like I, I can't even process that world war ii was really horrific as the water level reaches his chest and his feet leave the floor then miraculously something shines weakly above them the hatch to the upper floor opens slightly from the air pressure letting a sliver of light through Damn, okay. the men swim towards it and push it open they climb up moments before their pocket of air disappears. They close the hatch behind them, but they watch, horrified as seawater shoots up through the seals. Desperate to stop further flooding and believing the hatch was going to burst, they search for a way to reinforce it. The Yamato is mortally wounded. She's taking in water, listing, and there are no longer enough surviving crew members to rescue her. A new alarm joins the symphony of gunshots and explosions. The Ford magazine is at a critical temperature. Captain Aruga orders its flooding to prevent catastrophic detonation, but he's informed the pumps are inoperable. He stares out into the distance, exhausted and defeated. It's all over. How do you know that? He orders 
abandoned ship. You're getting more theatrics like they're showing their sad faces and they're looking the distance or like all the Hollywood shit. But how do you know that? Like, which every like did they wrote some kind of a diary or something that says this? We're just guessing it right now. Guessing would make more sense to me, right? Rather than this, but I don't know. I feel like you know, uh, appointing this kind of like a emotional responses during the wartime it feels weird because I'm pretty sure soldiers and generals basically not thinking all these things. They're just thinking more, just like how to do this, how to basically save men, how to just basically in their mind that's all the shit that's going through their head, right? I, I think Hollywood Hollywood level of shit only works in movies, not in real life. But I don't know, maybe. Admiral Ito stands up from his seat. Cancel the operation. Return to port after rescuing the men, he orders. It's the only thing he said since the start of the battle. A signalman runs out of the bridge to inform the rest of the ships of their new orders. The Admiral then thanks the crew on the bridge and solemnly leaves for his cabin. Captain Aruga then dismisses the remaining crew and orders them to abandon ship as well. Back under the deck, Kazuhiro and his crew jam a metal beam between the hatch and the roof, a desperate and futile attempt to slow yeah, the flooding. Okay. His commanding officer can see it's all over and yells at the group, everyone up. The sailors abandon their work and rush to the upper deck as the ship lists further and further underneath them. They emerge to a chaotic scene. The guns have stopped firing, men are jumping overboard and the wounded are being tended on the ground. All the while, the ship lists further and further to port. His officer orders them to throw everything that floats overboard, logs, mats, hammocks, whatever. The port railing sinks in the waves and the waterline starts taking over the deck as starboard rises up further and further. Standing up becomes a struggle. Oh he God, almost slips that. down the smooth deck into the ocean. It's then that Kazuhiro and his group decide it's time to abandon ship. He jumps off the stern and into the murky water below. He tries to swim up, but he can't. The propellers still spin and he is sucked into the whirlpools. Oh my god. Oh my god, not the propeller. The worst fear you can have of boats. The wrecked and burning battleship slowly turns over as the men jump overboard. Guns fall into the waves below when the Look Ford the magazine the detonates. Size of the center commander, whatever that is, might have well be just like a fucking billion or top billion of skyscraper type building or something. Look at the size of it, it's insane. Now, because of that that thing, right, the way it falls, it creates some kind of like a suction power. Then anybody's like around, people just think like, okay, we've boats and just, you know, jump in the water. But you do realize if a boat just sinks down like that, you would suck in water, right? If it does that, you're going to be pulled inside. Like, that's just horrifying shit. The resulting mushroom cloud is seen from mainland Japan. Japan. Kazuhiro yeah, okay. emerges from the sea some distance away. He's disoriented. Several black columns of smoke rise all around him. A film of oil Hido? floats or over the water, something? and he can see many people floating in the distance. Close by, he spots a group of survivors on a raft and joins them. Two and a half hours later, a Japanese destroyer approaches the raft and picks the men up from the water. Only 287 men of the more than 3,300 would be rescued. Kazuhiro... Okay, what I was just saying about, like, look at those, remember those boats, like that video I'm talking about where thousands of people die. Is this this incident, Yamato? Is that what I'm thinking of? Because it's like worst incident in ever, basically. It happened in World War II, where lots of sailors died in a warship. Is this this one? Was I thinking of this one? Because if like it's out of 3,000, what do you say, like only a few hundred left. It must be this one, right? Level of casualties, this is just fucked up. He was one of the lucky few. He survived the war and went back to his family. He was only 18. Admiral Damn. Ito and Captain Aruga went down with the ship. Operation Tengo was a total catastrophe. Of Yamato's escorts, five of the nine... I don't understand that. I know it's a Japanese thing, but what the fuck? Why did he went down with the ship? I don't know. Can't his army use him if he was in that kind of position? Sunk alongside her, and a sixth would be sunk later due to her damage. It would be the last major naval operation of Japan before the end of the war. Please. Yep, that was insane. Uh, I think this is the one I was thinking of, like, worst disaster of all time type of thing. The level of people died. 
Well, I get you know the captain thing doesn't make, doesn't make sense, but I get it. Like if if he had survived, I think they would have killed him anyway for being like that was that was his whole Japanese mentality, like dishonorable. If you're dishonorable, you're not even human or something. That's what they thought, right? Which is like fucked up. So I guess he had to go down. I don't know. It feels like you can't like army use this kind of veterans. Like I don't understand that, but okay. All right, well, that was the end of the largest battleship in the world by channel Yan Hum. If you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.